Okay, welcome to Electron Online. In our next example, we're going to do another trick function, a little bit more complicated in this case. So what we have here is we have r times the sine square of theta d theta dr. And notice that I have my theta limits right here because I'm going to integrate over d theta first. So sometimes it helps to do this. So we realize that we're going to integrate over the variable theta. All right, so uh, let's see here. Sine square of theta, how do we integrate that? Well, I think I know a trig identity. Uh, let's see here, the sine square of theta is equal to 1 half times 1 minus the cosine of 2 theta. And so we're going to use this trig identity because that will make this a whole lot easier to integrate. So this cannot be written as the integral from 0 to 2 times the integral from 0 to pi. I shouldn't say times because it's a double integral. Times r times 1 half. 1 minus the cosine of 2 theta, and we still have our d theta and our dr right here. Okay, now what that means is, because there's minus in here, we're going to end up with two integrals. So this can be written as the integral from 0 to 2, the integral from 0 to pi, and so this would be r divided by 2 times d theta dr minus the double integral from 0 to 2 and from 0 to pi. And now we take the right side. So we have uh, r times 1 half times this. So we have r times 1 half times the cosine of 2 theta times d theta dr. All right, now taking a look at this, I have the cosine of 2 theta. If I want to integrate that, I have to have the proper differential. I need a 2 d theta there, and I have a 1 half which means I have to multiply this times 2 and divide by 2 to compensate for it. So here we can take this outside of integral sign. So we have the integral from 0 to 2 times r over 2 because this is just a constant if I'm going to integrate the theta variable. So here I have d theta dr. And here I'm just going to integrate the d theta. And then minus, I'll take the r over 2 outside the integral sign times the double integral from, uh, maybe I don't want to take it all the way out here. I'm going to go like this, 0 to 2, and then r divided by 2 times the integral from 0 to pi times the cosine of 2 theta. Now I need a 2d theta there, dr. And since I multiply this times 2, I also have to divide by 2 over here to compensate for it. All right, now I think I'm ready to go ahead and do the integrals. This is easy, so this becomes the integral from 0 to 2, r over 2 times theta, because the integral d theta is just simply theta, with the limits from 0 to pi, minus the integral from 0 to 2 of r divided by 4, times the integral of cosine of 2 theta will be the sine of 2 theta, and the integration limits are going to be from 0 to pi, and I still need my dr there. All right, now I can go ahead and plug in my limits and evaluate these. So when I plug in my upper limit here, I get uh, the integral. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to 2. Plug in the upper limit, I get r times pi divided by 2. Plug in the lower limit, I get 0 times dr. Ooh, let's see here. I didn't put my dr there. I have to keep my differential because I still have my dr there. I have to leave it there. There's my dr. And then I have minus the integral from 0 to 2. And I have r over 4. And then when I plug in the upper limit, let's see here. When we plug in the pi over here, that's 2 times pi, the sine of 2 pi. Well, that would be 0. When I plug in the lower limit, the sine of 0 is 0. So I end up with 0 minus 0, and that would be dr. And of course, 0 minus 0 still gives you 0. 0 times anything is 0. This whole thing here goes to 0, and I'm just left with this portion of the problem. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 of r pi divided by 2 dr. And I'm ready to do my last integral. The only variable here is r, so maybe when we write it like this, pi divided by 2 times the integral from 0 to 2 of r dr looks a little cleaner, and so we can integrate that. So this is equal to pi divided by 2 times r squared over 2, and evaluate it from 0 to 2. 
which is equal to, when we plug in the upper limit, we get pi divided by 2 times 2 squared over 2 minus the lower limit, I get 0. And so this would be 4 divided by 4, so it simply would be pi. And that's the answer for that problem. All right, so here you can see that sometimes, in order to be able to get through an integral like this, you need to find a good trig identity that makes it easier to integrate. It's a good thing that you should memorize those types of identities. So we replace that by 1 minus the cosine of 2 theta times 1 half. And then you realize you can break it up into two integrals. You do the, separate, the left integral. This is going to be very easy, simply integrating of d theta. And that's a fairly integral as well, except here, since you have cosine of 2 theta, you need a proper differential 2d theta in order to be able to integrate that. And that's how we do that.